Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello, I'm Jayantu Chatterjee from IIT Kanpur Industrial Management Engineering Department and I have here with me my colleague uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Shashi Shekhar Mishra. Uh, as you know, we are discussing uh, management of marketing, the introductory part of it as our first module and in our week two, we have started discussing about uh, the different interactions between marketing and the overall strategy of the organization. So this is our third session of the week and today our topic is marketing objectives and uh, strategy and their interrelationships. So marketing fundamentally has the strategy of ensuring uh, revenue growth ensuring uh, profit growth. But today we put it in a, in a, a little bit more uh, uh, broader term uh, because there are other important aspects that we now realize. First of all, marketing must engage in activities that perform a socially and economically useful exchange and ideally such exchange must have follow on impact, positive impact on society. Secondly, marketing's objective is that to develop a marketing organization to carry out the marketing functions and uh, implement uh, marketing strategies. And above all, uh, as I was saying in the beginning, we have to earn sufficient surplus or profit uh, as the case may be. In case of a not-for-profit organization, we will call it surplus. And we need that uh, bottom line, we need that net earning to survive and grow. And uh, taking this growth must come taking uh, minimum resources and uh, from nature, uh, from the organization itself and it must uh, generate ultimately optimum satisfaction of people. Now. If we look at the company objectives, these three objectives that we just discussed with respect to marketing objective, if we now put it in the broader framework of company objectives, then as you see on the on your screen, you have production objectives, finance objectives, we, you have human resource objectives, R&D objectives. So marketing objective is a subset of the overall uh, set of uh, corporate objectives. Now, within marketing objective, we have different other objectives like uh, these are the second line and the third line uh, details like product objective, place objective, those uh, we have already discussed in the uh, previous week. And then we can go further down, say under promotion objective, we can look at details like personal selling objective, advertising objective and so on. So fundamentally what we are saying is that uh, there is a hierarchy of objectives. First is the organization's overall objective. Within that there are a number of objectives according to different functions. So marketing being a primary function, uh, we have a set of marketing objectives and those marketing objectives can be further subdivided. And uh, this is in a way also uh, shows uh, the structure of our uh, course because we will follow this hierarchy that means from marketing objectives later on in the later weeks we will go into the details of uh, each objective. As I discussed in the first session of this week that uh, just as we see marketing strategy deployment or the tactical part of marketing, 
in terms of the four P's, the strategic part of marketing we actually see in terms of three C's and other factors like political, economic, etc., which have been discussed in the previous two sessions of this week. Now, of the three C's, the C that we are uh, uh, concerned with most at this stage uh, in today's session is the uh, C of competition. So, the competitive environment from economics, as you know, can that be that of pure competition. That means there are number of uh, companies uh, uh, and none of them hold uh, overarching power or dominant position. So, there it is a uh, highly competitive fragmented market situation uh, where uh, different companies come up with different offerings, different strategies and the market is always in a turmoil. Then we have oligopoly where few companies uh, may be uh, dominating the market. So, usually so, something like an 80-20 rule <coughs> will apply here that 20 percent of the competitive players will dominate 80 percent of the market. I mean this 20 and 80 can vary 30, 70 and so on, but fundamentally oligopoly means that few dominate and others kind of are scattered. Then we have monopoly which today uh, uh, a, a hardly uh, exists except uh, in uh, state controlled uh, businesses. Uh, so, monopoly means that there is only one company and they uh, control the complete, uh, dominate the entire market and offer their offerings are the complete set of offerings. And uh, monopolistic competition is where actually there is a controlled competition, there may be two companies. So, in a state controlled um, uh, markets like for example, say in electricity or coal, we see this kind of maybe two state units competing with each other. So, it is not really uh, competition, uh, the first type of pure competition, it is a very control limited competition. Most markets uh, which we will be discussing will have uh, usually a, an oligopolistic structure. To understand not only the competition, but also other important players uh, in the field of, uh, in the realm of strategy, uh, we can borrow this famous diagram of five forces from Michael Porter of Harvard. And uh, here as you see, uh, in the middle, we have what we call the industry uh, competitors and the intensity of rivalry in, in a uh, uh, competitive market, oligopolistic or pure competition. And then this is uh, a result of uh, several vectors that means uh, forces with a certain direction. So, we, we have suppliers and uh, they uh, have certain influence on how the strategy and the competitive uh, strategy play out. Then there are new entrants who are trying to come into the market. So, they are the challengers. Then they are uh, different types of substitutes which might be completely changing uh, the nature of the industry. Like for example, as you see now that the music industry which was earlier uh, dominated by uh, music supplied on cassettes and uh, CDs etc. Uh, now, uh, is totally dominated by the, the music industry uh, which earlier was uh, delivered to customer, uh, delivering their products and services to customers in bundles like cassettes, CDs and uh, other kinds of transmission, now totally dominated by the mobile uh, telephony industry because most music today are downloaded uh, from the internet on the phone by customers and enjoyed accordingly. So, that is changing, uh, th that is becoming almost a uh, substitute form, uh, totally replacing the CDs and cassettes and all the other different uh, media that existed before and this is now becoming the dominant uh, substitute for music uh, platform, music delivery. So, that is what we mean, mean by 
substitutes and as they influence competitive structures. And then of course, there are uh, buyers, the most uh, important part of the um, competitive force and the changing nature of the buyers and the changing tastes and the competitive forces they unleash their point. Competitive advantage, uh, the a company has a marketing mix that the target market uh, sees as better than a competitor's mix. So, as you see this is where we link up tactics and strategy. So, the way customer sees uh, the strategy or feels or perceives the strategy, marketing strategy of an organization is through those four P's of uh, price and uh, uh, product features and uh, promotion and distribution and so on. Uh, the formulation however of the strategy comes from uh, various uh, environmental factors and other internal and external analysis which we will be discussing just now. So, to create that tactical uh, bundle, the company is required to understand current competitors offerings, anticipate uh, the existing competitors and new competitors and their likely plans and they have to also uh, uh, monitor uh, the effects of changes in the competition like uh, appearance of substitutes or uh, new suppliers coming in with new kinds of uh, raw materials or components or subsystems. So, as you see therefore, analyzing the competitive landscape is a continuous internal occupation of the marketing function in an organization and the way then they respond to that competitive uh, function uh, gets understood by the customers in terms of the four P's. Competitive strategies can uh, carry different risks. We discussed the ANSOF metrics uh, in the previous week session. So, from that we, we already know that unrelated diversification, that means not only it is a new product in a new market, but it is unrelated to the uh, products that you have been dealing in so far, that is the most uh, risky business. So, a petroleum company, if that now gets into say uh, fast food business, that will be an unrelated diversification new types of products, new types of customers, a new market segment and that is the most risky. Market penetration which is uh, going uh, with existing products to existing customers and covering more of them is uh, the most usual strategy that is what we are doing day in and day out and then in between are the two areas where either market development or product development, the routes through which we then go for this uh, uh, diversifications or unrelated diversification. And uh, which route we will take from where we are today, market <coughs> penetration to uh, the blue ocean or the complete new area of market, this uh, trajectory of our uh, journey, marketing journey will depend on those uh, uh, political, economic, social, technical and other factors uh, that we have discussed in the previous session. Because so that will make a particular opportunity either uh, less attractive or more attractive. So, as you see currently the way we are looking at strategy, we are looking in terms of where we want to be. That means our current position versus the new position that we want to create. Here we do not consider so much about our capabilities or internal resources etc. We assume that those can be arranged, but in today's world that is not always true. So, tomorrow we will look at another view of strategy which we call the resource view of strategy, but that let us take that up tomorrow. So, today in this within this uh, uh, resource uh, within this position view or position school of strategy in that framework, 
adoption of a particular strategy will be an interaction between the tactical part and the formulation part. So, for example, if there is a company which want to introduce disposable nappies in the Indian market, it has to see whether it wants to come in with a distinctive product that means it, whether it wants to play with feature based competition or it has to decide whether it has to play, uh, it wants to compete on the basis of price coming up with a lower price or it wants to uh, compete in terms of a wider distribution or a new type of promotion. So, it has to look at the competitors, current competitors, their strengths and weaknesses, their strategic emphasis and what will be the kind of response from them if you come in into that market of uh, disposable nappies uh, and depending on your strategy, what kind of strategic response your competitors might have, based on that you will have to decide that whether you will make a combination of a product and price based um, entry strategy or you will make an entry strategy where all four factors uh, will be uh, playing and so on. Now this, uh, this is a very interesting uh, diagram I find, yeah. this actually we will have to, several aspects of it, we can take it up in the subsequent sessions. So the entry into Indian markets, as I was discussing about this uh, nappies, nappies example. Uh, disposable nappies, so on one hand it will be determined, the strategy will be determined by competitive analysis understanding that what uh, the competitors price positions, the com current competitors promotion strategies or distribution strategies etc. are and what kind of response the uh, competitors might uh, offer uh, in response to uh, your entry into that market. But side by side or rather simultaneously as we were discussing uh, as we do this uh, competition based external analysis, we have to also do internal analysis. For example, if the product, the life cycle of the product, the product life cycle as a concept and what it means in strategy, we will discuss in more detail later on. But uh, usually it comes as an S uh, shaped uh, graph and this shows the complete uh, life cycle uh, structure. So if it is going like this, the entire strategy and you are, uh, we are coming in at say some point here and then the total cost build up line will be this then we will have to determine the pricing strategy, the promotion strategy, yeah. uh, the distribution strategy, understanding where we have entered the market with respect to the life cycle. Yeah. And we have to do this competition based analysis. Obviously, if we are here, the competition is intense. There are many, many competitors. Yes. Whereas, if we are entering somewhere here, then uh, the, the competition has become very oligopolistic has become very set, few uh, competitors will be totally dominating the market. So as you see this graph is kind of this part. So if this is the graph, this is where you have entered, that means you have entered here instead of here, then this is that going to be your cost build up. So your pricing strategy has to therefore uh, take in uh, account the entire marketing strategy has to take in account the external factors and the internal factors simultaneously because the internal factors will determine uh, the, the cost uh, and how the cost will grow over time or the cumulative cost. So the cumulative sales will depend however on the life cycle uh, position uh, of entry and accordingly we will have to manage the other piece, uh, the other other marketing mix factors ultimately to uh, what I am trying to say therefore is that 
the the composition of the tactical package in terms of the four p's determined is determined by the overall strategy framework and the overall strategy framework depends on simultaneous understanding and analysis uh, of external factors and internal factors to conclude this particular session i would now like to uh, just show the uh, famous uh, two models this is the first model uh, which is in fact perhaps i would take this model first this is the famous uh, bcg matrix where they actually put again in a 2 by 2 matrix uh, or relative market share versus market market growth rate so if the market growth rate is high and the relative market share is high then that is the star position that is the most desired position and if the relative market share is low and uh, the market growth rate is low no. then that's kind of the uh, the the most the worst market position uh, which they call dog and this is where the mar relative market share is high but the market growth rate is low which means that uh, we are on that upper side of the graph which i was mm. discussing later stages uh, of the product life cycle later stage of the product life cycle uh, in that matured condition number of competitors yeah. have come down, come down whereas number of competitors will be uh, much higher when the market growth rate is higher yeah so here and here there will be many competitors yeah. and here and here there will be few competitors but if you have few competitors low growth market but your market share is very high that can generate a lot of cash so that's why they called it cash cow but this particular uh, model is kind of not used that much because uh, many authors later on many researchers and managers have criticized this uh, use of these animal models because that brings in some additional uh, you know sort of values that are not correct but if we uh, uh, go this model this is a much better model for uh, understanding because the here we have taken industry attractiveness and divided it into three parts the famous this is the famous uh, ge uh, strategic Same planning thing. grid this very nicely uh, brings together uh, the internal factors as well as uh, external, external factors function. the company's current position and where it wants to be uh, and the competitive structure everything together so industry attractiveness divided in three parts high mod medium low business strength in three parts low medium high and obviously therefore if business strength that means relative market share is high industry is very attractive then this is the most uh, desired Design. position and here therefore this whole package of uh, size growth share position profitability margins technology position all that will be different in different blocks determined by both external factors as well as internal factors and therefore what a company should do in terms of marketing as a strategy and then how that strategy will be deployed through the marketing mix as tactics will be different under different circumstances and this is what uh, we will discuss uh, through various sessions uh, in the subsequent days and see how that generates the different aspects of uh marketing in terms of uh positioning segmentation targeting yeah. uh, or the other way around segmentation mm -hmm. targeting positioning and differentiation yeah. uh, and so that package of deployment tactics comes out of this overall strategy framework uh, that we have discussed today thank you thank you